and loving and gracious Father, we thank you once again for this wonderful morning. As you promised in your word, Lord, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in your midst, you, sir, Lord, and we thank you, Father. Right now, as we prepare ourselves to listen to your word, you said man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from your mouth. As we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, you said, Lord, draw near to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And we command every demonic spirit that is acting against us, that is not allowing us to worship you in spirit and truth, that is trying to distract us, Lord, so that we would not be able to recognize the calling that you have called each and every one of us, Lord. We thank you once again, Father, that you have opened our spiritual mind, our heart, so that we would be able to receive the living word. So we believe, and we believe that your word will not return to you void. It will fulfill the plan and purpose for what it has been sent. Once again, I humble myself under the mighty hand of God, Lord. Think to my mind, speak to my vocal cords. Let everything be of you, Lord. And we ask you, Father, make this teaching easy so that we will be able to understand and put it into practice so that whatever your plan is for us, let it be fulfilled in our lives, Lord. We make this prayer to praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Can you hear me, sister? Yes, yes. Yes, brother. We can hear you. Ah, praise God. Can we take uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18? Today we're going to see how to grow spiritually strong, mature. Sister Jaya, are you there? Not yet. She's not there? No. Oh, should I read, brother? Yeah, yes. Yeah, sure. Second Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. Three, seventeen, and eighteen. The Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So, with unveiled faces, we all reflect as in a mirror the glory of the Lord while we are transformed into his likeness and experience his glory more and more by the action of the Lord, who is spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us close our eyes once again. Loving and gracious Father, we ask you, Father, to give us revelation of your word, Lord, so that we would be able to understand and fulfill every plan of yours in our life, Lord. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Read that 18 again, sister. Okay. So with unveiled faces, we all reflect as in a mirror the glory of the Lord while we are transformed into his likeness and experience his glory more and more by the action of the Lord who is spirit. Amen. Amen. So we see here, uh, it's a very clear indication that God wants us because we read in the scriptures the whole earth is filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. And that glory is locked up in you and me. All of us, we have the glory of God. And that's what God is trying to tell us through his word. When unveiled faces beholding the glory of the Lord are being changed into his likeness from one degree of glory to another. And this comes from the Lord who is the spirit. So all this work God is trying to tell us he is doing the works. He wants his glory to be revealed in you and me. And we make the first mistake is we try to do and glorify God with our works, with, with our actions, with, with our prayers and things. So God is telling us that he wants to do it, being changed into his likeness from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Lord of Spirit. He is the one who created this. He is the one who known us, and he wants to, his glory to be revealed. And that is that's why the Bible tells us very clearly, I know the plans I have for you. God has plans for every one of us. Jeremiah 29, 11, and we are all anxious to know his plan. And we all know that his plans are the best plans for us. But we need to get connected to God. We need to be in line with him 
we must, we must be able to receive and listen to his word so that because it says in verse 12 uh, everyone i know the plans i have for you plans for your welfare and not for your disaster then it says when you seek me with all your heart you will find me because the number one thing that the devil does is he puts uh, like unbelief in us he, he tells us you're not worthy you're not able to fulfill god's plan uh, he, the devil, he, because we know he's an accuser. He's an accuser of the brethren because he's, he's trying to tell you, you're not worthy, you're a sinner, you're doing this, you're doing that, you cannot grow, you cannot operate, you cannot do the things what Jesus has commanded you to do. All these negative things will come into your mind because the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But here we see God is trying to tell us, oh, he's working his plan in us. All we need to do is submit. And the greatest thing that all of us face is we are finding it difficult to believe what the Bible says. The Word of God is written for us now for us to believe and act on it. When we start to believe, because we say we believe, all of us say we believe, but our actions prove that we don't believe. Because the Bible says, fear not, I am with you. And why God is trying to tell us he is the creator of this whole universe and he is in control of everything. And he's telling you and me, fear not, I am with you. The one who can solve this problem, the one who created this whole universe, the one who can change water into wine, the one who can change water into blood, he can change your dark situation. He can do anything. He's telling you, you believe in me and trust in me. Now it says, those who put their trust in the Lord will not be put to shame. And we all know, we read the scriptures, we say, our God never sleeps or slumbers. So he's always watching over you and me. And we try to understand this loving God with our peanut brain, we will not be able to understand. We need to believe through faith, believing in his word. That's what it says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So we, that's why we need to ask the Holy Spirit to give us the grace to believe in his word and then to act on his word. So then now we know well, belief is action corresponding to the message. So when we say we, we fear not, we are going to say, uh, God is with me. I will not be afraid. Who can be against me? The scripture says, when God is with me, who can be against me? Let, and even if anything is coming against me, God is able to turn that, that bad into good. He can change that mourning into dancing. He can change that darkness into light. And that God is with you and with me. And he wants me to allow him to work in my life. Most of the time, I'm trying to figure out my own. I'm trying to do things on my own. And that's why we are failing. When we, just that's what the Bible says, be still and know that I am Lord. The moment you are still, God can work in your life. God can change every dark situation. He can change everything that you're going through you now for our good. That, that is what God wants you to believe in his word, to trust in his word. If you look at, uh, if you see, God is living in you. He is he, what he says now. Uh, if you look at uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Philippians. Yeah. 2, verse 13. 13. It is God who makes you not only to will but also to carry out what pleases him. Amen. Uh, 14, 15. Do everything without grumbling, so that you may also become blameless and pure children of God without reproach in a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine like stars in the universe. Holding fast uh, the word of life, therefore I shall feel proud of you on the day of Christ on seeing that my effort and labor have not been in vain. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, we see. So God is at work in you both to will and to Amen. work for his good pleasure. So God is at work. So now we need to submit. To so allow God to do that. Now, what, what is he trying to do? He is trying to make us like his son, Jesus. He wants us to be holy. 
he wants us to so that's what he said do all things without grumbling or questioning that you may be blameless and innocent children of god without blemish in the midst of a crooked and previous generation among whom you shine as lights in the world so that's his purpose he yes now we all know as children our parents taught us who made you god made you why did he make you to know him to love him and serve him so our duty is to submit to him submit to god and his word when we allow the word of god to enter our lives this word will transform us this word will open our spiritual eyes and now we are able to do those things which god wants us to do and that's what it says for god is at work he's at work so when we try to do our work we are finding it difficult because it's impossible for us to live a holy happy victorious life that's why he's given us the holy spirit and now when we submit to the holy spirit for example we tell the holy spirit holy spirit i love you holy spirit be my helper holy spirit take control of my life now we can do that because who's working in you the holy spirit is working in you and he is working till he could accomplish this plan and purpose that the it's in work in progress now how long that will take we don't know but we are being transformed every day every day every minute of our life god is working on us no he is living in you he is working in you he is walking with you all the time so that's why when we read the scripture even proverbs 3 Five and six is a trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. So imagine God is with you; He's in you now. So our mind should be fixed on God and His Word, and like how we breathe freely, we are continuously breathing. So we are connected to the Holy Spirit, and He will direct your path all the time. And now again, it says, "My sheep hear my voice." So, for for example, God wants to give us special instruction. He will speak to us because now He's inside of you now, and you are you are connected to Him. You you do not receive a spirit of condemnation, but a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. So now you are connected to the Holy Spirit. Now it's a joy to hear His voice. And now, when the Bible says, "My sheep hear My voice, and they follow Me, and I give them eternal life, and no one can snatch them out of My hand." that is the greatest news now you know the devil cannot snatch you out of god's hand you are in his hand but what you can do is open the hand of god and jump out and say i don't believe in god i don't trust his word i am confused so that's why we need to say i have the mind of christ the wisdom of god formed within him and now i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and now i am connected to the vine and i am able to hear the voice of our savior so when you do that we are being led by the spirit because the bible tells us all those who are led by the spirit they are sons and daughters of god now we can be led by the spirit we can be led by our own uh, thinking so that is what when every time we get connected to to the holy spirit every time we come in the morning we are praising and thanking god and what are we doing we are asking god to pour his love into our heart through the holy spirit now we getting connected to god now the moment we get connected now what is god, god is he's pouring his love now this love is the most important thing that in this on this planet earth this love is the raw material from this love you get everything that you need for life and godliness because god does not have love he himself is love he is pouring his love into your heart through the holy spirit first thing he is making you strong he is making you strong so that you can stand firm when times of trial times of times of temptation because now he what he is doing is molding you and is making you more and more like his son jesus that is his plan for you and for me he wants us to be like his son jesus and that's why he has given us the holy spirit now that's why we are all called to follow his instructions if you look at romans 8 28 in romans 8 romans 8:28 yeah and this uh we know that in everything god works for the good of those who love him whom he has called according to his plan amen thank you sir those whom he knew beforehand he also predestined to be like his son so that 
he may be the firstborn among many brethren. And so those whom he predestined, he also called those whom he called. He also put right with himself those whom he put right with himself. He also glorified. Amen. Mm. What shall we say after this? If God is with us, who shall be against us? God who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how could he withhold from us all things along with him? If God puts right with him those he chooses, who can accuse them? Who will dare to condemn? It is Christ himself who died for us, who was raised from the dead and is seated at the right hand of God, interceding for us. Amen. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Will it be trials? or anguish, or persecution, or hunger, or lack of clothing, or dangers, or sword, as scripture says, for your sake we are being killed all day long, they treat us like sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all of this we are more than conquerors through him who has loved us. I'm certain that neither death nor life neither angels, nor spiritual powers, neither the present, nor the future, nor cosmic powers, neither the world above or the world below, nor any creature whatsoever will be able to separate us from the love of God, which we have in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So it says very clearly that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Now if we see we all say, you know, most of the people will hold on to this verse and say, we know that all things, we know that in everything God works for good for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. Now, this will operate for all the people who are children of God, all those who believe in his word, all those who believe in his promises, everything that the devil tries to come against us, God will change it for our own good. And why he does that? He says, because he wants us to become See, what it says, well, who is to condemn us? See, all things work to good for those, for those for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his son. So he is already planned. And we all know that we are all chosen even before the foundation of the world. So God's purpose was that we should be clean that we should live a holy, happy, victorious life. We should be more and more like his son. He's changing us. He's transforming us. That's what uh, predestined to be called. Those he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. So all this is in the mind of Christ. God had, before the foundation of this planet, that he had this plan in you and me. So when we, when somebody comes against us, when we are facing trials and problems, when we submit to God, God changes that. He changes it. He transforms us. And then that's what we, we can boldly say. What then shall we say of this? Who, if God is for us, who, who is against us? Who can be against us? Who can come against us? He is the supreme power. And he is the alpha and the omega. He knows the beginning and the end. See, it says he did not spare his own son but gave him up for us. Why? Because he, he didn't want us to suffer. The wages of sin is death. And all of us, he knows that we will always fall into sin. And before time, Jesus has already paid. He, he paid for your sins and my sins, for the sins, even the sins that we are in future also, he has already paid. So now, after doing all that, now we know who is to condemn us. Is it Christ Jesus who died for us? He died for us. Why is he going to condemn us now? Who is raised from the dead and who is at the right hand of God who indeed intercedes for us. Now, this is the thing we are failing to recognize. Where is Jesus now? He has finished everything now. He sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and me now. So that's why he says, if you ask anything in my name, when you ask the Lord, I am weak in this area, he strengthens you. 
He gives you the grace and strength to come out of that problem. So now every day we are being transformed. We are receiving power and strength from the Lord. Then again, so who shall separate us from the love of God? This love is so powerful. All we need to do is believe. We are struggling to believe. That is what we need to ask God to increase our capacity to believe his word. Because what the Bible says, we need to believe. This is your, the Bible is your spiritual mirror. When we look at ourselves and see, we can see. Now the devil will show you all your weakness. The devil will not show you the authority that as a child of God. See, the moment you say, Jesus, you're my Lord, you become a child of God. And now you can op operate in the supernatural. And this truth is not being revealed to you. You're not able to understand it because you're looking at yourself. When I look at myself, I am unworthy. I'm a sinner. I can't do these things on my own. But God looks at me as, as he looks at his son. Because the same anointing that was on Jesus is on you and me. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you and me. Now, the only problem is I have not activated it. I'm not allowing the spirit to move. So when I do things according to my own will, I'm not able to fulfill God's plan. And that's why we're asking the Lord, Lord, I surrender my will to you. Because the will is such a powerful will God has given us. It's a free will. And this free will is dangerous for us sometimes because I can say there is no God. I don't believe in God. See, the God will show you. Always when he gives you a question and answer, he will show you the answer also. He says, life and death is in the power of your tongue. And then he says, choose life that you and your descendants might live. He's telling you the answer. You choose life. So what you speak, it will happen. Whatever you speak, you're speaking life or you're speaking death. So that's what, when you say you have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God, now I'm connected to God. Now I will speak only what God wants me to speak. Because where we know we are all imitating Jesus because he wants us to Im imitate him. As Jesus lived on this planet, Earth, he wants us to live. Now we cannot say we can't do that because we know we have the greatest help of the Holy Spirit. If I'm doing, if I'm trying to do things on my own, I will struggle and I will not be able to do the thing. That's what it says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And this Christ is strengthening you and me every day, every minute of our life. That's why I need to totally depend on the Lord. Total, total dependence. And now, the breath that I'm breathing is from the Lord. Everything that I do, it will magnify and glorify His name. And that is what God wants us to live. He wants us to live a supernatural life in total dependence. When we're living in total dependence, we will see the glory of God. That's what it says. He's transforming us from glory to glory because he wants us to live a supernatural life. Oh, he's doing the works and what we need to do, we need to do the believing. Believing that God is at work, work in progress, not today, all the days of our life, till we reach our destiny. Our destiny is to be like his son Jesus, to live a holy, happy, victorious life. And that's why it depends on how much are we submitting, how much are we surrendering, how much are we giving God? If we give him only 10% of our life, he can only change you 10%. Still 90%, you're still living in sin. That's why once we come into the Lord, now we know our eyes are open and we know what God likes and what he does not like. No, the very first thing that God, what God pleases, which pleases God, faith. Faith in his word, faith in his promises. Faith that he is the same yesterday, today and forever. Hebrews 11, 6 says, it is impossible to please God without faith. So he has given us, all of us have been given the measure of faith. All of us are given. Now we are all, the devil he comes to distract you and he's trying to show you to ask God to increase your faith. We have not used the faith that God has given us. We see a mustard size of grain of faith is enough to move mountains. We have not moved mountains. We have not used our faith. We have not exercised our faith. As we start exercising our faith, we are becoming stronger. We become, uh, we, we, we become firm. Now we know that God is working in us. Because when we do things which is supernatural, we know it's not on our own. So there's no room for us to boast, boast about. We know we can't do all these things. When we see miracles happening, signs happening, signs and wonders happening, we know that 
we are just instruments God is using us and now we need to give him the glory and honor that is always when we see things happening in our lives the first thing that we need to do is surrender and give God the glory give him the glory because the whole all the glory belongs to God that sickness that disease that demon will go because of that beautiful name because we say you know everything that has a name has to bow at the name of Jesus our problem today is we are still struggling to believe God's word He's, here we see in one minute, praise God. Thank you. And to Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, For God is at work in you. He is in you now because we know God could not come and stay in a person who is living in sin. Because we did not have the Holy Spirit. But the day we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, now the Holy Spirit can come and dwell in you and me now. So now when he's in you, what is he doing? He's changing you into the likeness of his son. He's changing your wants. He's changing your likes. Before we were living a life that was not pleasing to God sometimes. So now, what is he doing? He is at work. For God is at work. And now we know, God, he never sleeps or slumbers. He is working in you. Both to will and to work for his good pleasure. He is changing you into his likeness, into his image. He is wanting you and me to be just like his son, Jesus. Jesus is our role model. And now all we need to do is cooperate. So now we see an example uh, in John 15, 6. Can we read that? Sister, are you there? Yes, yes, sister. Yes, brother. Yeah. Uh, whoever does not remain in me is like yeah. a withered branch that is thrown away. And the withered branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. Amen. Seven. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask whatever you want and it will be given to you. This is how my father is glorified you. Become my disciples and bear much fruit. Amen. Wow. So that is, that is the most important thing God is telling us. So all we need to do is remain in the, yeah, uh, the Father is our, he says, you know, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask anything you will. Before that, he says, a man, if a man does not abide in me, he is, he is cast forth as a branch and withers. Imagine, if we are, we are all branches, we are connected to the vine. And that is what is happening every morning when we come to the Lord. We are like trees planted by the streams of water. We are receiving our, our strength from the rivers of living water. We are being watered every day. And now, and when we do that, God is transforming us. He is working in us. Work in progress. He is working. All we need to do is believe and allow the Spirit to work in us. So, the, why? By this, the Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. God wants us to bear much fruit. And we all know the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace. We are asking people to love, love. Why? Well, if you are not connected to the wine, if you are not receiving that power from the from the Lord, how can we bear fruit? I unless I have love, I can give love to others, and that is what we are here every morning. What are we doing? We are praising and thanking God. We are worshiping Him and and praising Him. And what is God doing? He is working on our belief. He is working. He is removing those things which is not of the kingdom and replacing it with his love, joy, peace. We are being filled with the love of God. We have a, Today we can feel we have an overflow. 
when we see people who are, uh, are depressed and worried, we can share with them the love of God because now the more we give, the more we get. Because the Bible says, if you are kind to the poor, you are lending to the Lord. Now you know God, what God likes. You, he, he wants you to be kind to the poor. When you're kind to the poor, you're lending to the Lord. In Proverbs 19.17 says, so we, much more when you, when you help the poor. So we learn what God likes, what he doesn't like. What God hates is sin. Why? Sin will make you guilty. Sin will separate you from the love of God. Sin will not allow you to grow spiritually. So what God hates, we also hate. So he wants us to love one another. If we do not have God's love, how can we love? We are not able to love ourselves. Today, people are finding themselves difficult to love themselves. They are not satisfied with the life that they are living. They are not satisfied with the things that they are having. They are always looking at others and wanting so many things. As we know, God doesn't supply our wants. He supplies our needs. I might want so many things, but God supplies my needs. My needs are such so much I because he's because as a as a father we we have children. We, your child may want so many things, but you know what the child needs. You give the child. The child when the child is young, the child will ask for so many things. Whatever the child sees on the road, the child will ask. If you're a good father, you will not give the child. Even if the child screams and rolls on the ground, you'll give the child to wax and take the child to a proper shop and buy a sealed product or food or something, not on the roadside, because you love the child. Same way, we have a God who loves us and he will supply all and what we need, he gives us. And his needs are sufficient for us. So if we ask for things which is not according to God's word, he will not give. Because if he gives us means, that means he doesn't love us. Because those things will destroy us. So that is what, before that, what God is trying to show us, all we need to do is seek first the kingdom of God. Seek him first. The moment we seek him, the basics we do, now automatically all these other things will be added on to you. As a Christian, as a believer, as a child of God, we don't need to ask God, Lord, I need this. Before you get up in the morning, your, your, all your needs are being supplied. Because God does this not even today. Even before the foundation of the earth, he has already planned. He's got plan A, plan B. If you fail in plan A, he's got plan B ready for you. He will not give up on you and me. And today, if it is because of his love today, we are all living today. We have messed up his plan in so many ways. But he still doesn't give up on you and me. My dear brother, my dear sister, hold on to God. Hold on to his word. Hold on to his promises. He is a way maker, promise keeper. He is faithful to his word. First, we need to get connected to his word, to believe his word, to read his word, to understand his word, and to know. Imagine he has everything in store for us. And the one who rejoices is God. When you, when you prosper, when you do things which is according to his word, he's a God who rejoices. Imagine we read in, uh, in Zephaniah 3.17, the Lord your God is your, in your midst. Imagine, he's telling you, I'm in your midst. A warrior gives you victory. He's with you all the time. When you face trials, when you're facing a problem, he's with you. Am I believing in God? He is with me. I can't make people believe that he's with them. You and me, each and every, he's a personal God. He's with you. And he says, I will never, never leave you nor forsake you. He's a faithful God. He's a promise keeper. And he's faithful to his word. So his word is there. If you understand his word, if you hold on to his word, if you hold on to his promises, and you know now that who you are, you're a child of God, and your father, who is God, is with you. Can we read that sister? Zephaniah 3.17. The Lord your God is in your midst. The Lord your God is in your midst. A mighty warrior gives you victory. A mighty warrior is with you. The Lord your God is in your midst. A saving Amen. warrior. 
he will rejoice over you with gladness and Amen. revive you in his love he Amen. will dance with songs of joy for you Amen. as Amen. one day as one does on a day of festival amen amen thank you jesus thank you jesus we are reading that are we believing that our problem is to believe is not only for a special brother or sister it's for every one every one who believes in his name no when when you are doing well your neighbor or your friend they will they will not rejoice over you they will be jealous about you they will see they will want to see your downfall but you will see a god is with you he is rejoicing over you with loud singing he is rejoicing because that's what that's why we always like to celebrate when somebody celebrating the birthday i imagine god is rejoicing he is he is rejoicing because he says no i didn't make a mistake all my son's blood that i purchased my brother my sister now i can see them glorifying my name i can see them doing the wonderful work the lord rejoices over you when you're kind to the poor when you're doing god's work when you're doing the will of the father when you're doing according to his will he's rejoicing when you depend on him he is is happy he's rejoicing because he wants you to totally depend on him and that's what we are doing every day every morning we're asking god we can't do anything without you lord now god is at will and work he is working now what he is doing he is changing your life he is changing your wants to his will he is transforming us into his likeness into his image because his plan is that we should be like his son jesus blameless spotless we can't do it on our own that's why we need to die to ourselves every day asking god god help us lord holy spirit i love you Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. God hates sin. We also should hate sin. That's why even in our thought life also, we don't want to sin. But even if you sin, my dear brother, my dear sister, do not get condemned. Do not feel guilty. Because the Bible says, we have an advocate who is interceding for us. And where is he? He is inside of you in the form of spirit. And he is at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. So do not feel guilty. Come back to God, because all of us fail. But the more we come to God, believing in His Word, now He is strengthening us. Now, when you come out of that problem, you fall into that sin. You come out. Now God strengthens you. Now after that, as He, as we know, Jesus spoke to Peter. When you come out, strengthen your brother, encourage your brother. When you see a brother or sister committing sin or living a life or substandard life, encourage them. call and talk to them speak to them pray for them we can't even pray for them this is our work on this planet earth to pray for them you see a brother or sister doing something wrong pray for them don't criticize don't condemn if you do that you are losing your anointing who are we because uh, when you do that you are helping the devil the devil is an accuser of the brethren he is totally every time he is going to god and say see that brother he is praying every morning 5 o'clock and see what is this now what is he doing he's committing sin he's doing this cause as i know i know my son i know my daughter he knows you and me he knows that you are weak and that's why when we pray in tongues we're not only praying for ourselves we are praying for all the saints we are praying for all the people who are doing god's work to be strengthened because we know doing god's work preaching his word is the number one He says, "I have exalted my name and my word above everything." The number one priority God wants us to preach His word, to share His love, and the devil will come against you. And today, people will speak so many things. If I am doing it, it's okay. If I am not doing anything, if I am only speaking ill about that brother or sister, that's not going to help me. You are helping the devil by criticizing, condemning, and speaking. when you see something going wrong with that brother and sister lord we pray that that brother spirit lies be open let me not do that let me be led by the spirit and we know even if that brother that sister anybody who is preaching the word of god go make some mistake god says they will be least in the kingdom not out of the kingdom whereas if i am speaking about that brother i will not be in the kingdom of god 
see the work of the devil. So that's why we have to be careful. I need to obey God's word. I need to go to God. I need to get instructions. And today all of us can get instructions from the Holy Spirit directly. The Bible says, you don't need to teach anyone. I will write my laws on their heart and I will be their God and they will be my children. So God is at work in us. He wants us, why? He wants us to be transformed daily, daily. All we need to do is believe. Believe in his word. Believe he speaks to me. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me and I give them eternal life and no one can snatch them out of my hand. So, that is the most important thing that we need to recognize. And see here, God says, I, I, I will, I will, I will. So we are trying to do what God has said. I will bring you, I will uphold you with my right hand. I will strengthen you. I will do this. God says, I will do. all I need to do is, Lord, I'm here, Lord. I'm weak, Lord. Strengthen me, you will do it. Let's read uh, Isaiah 41.10. We need to read the word of God to believe it and act on it. Have no fear, for I am with you. Amen. Be, be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will, give, I will give you strength and bring you help. I will uphold you with my right hand of justice. Um, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God is telling, I will do, I will do, I will do. He says, what we need to do. Do not afraid. Do not allow fear. Now, when you say that God is with you, all I need to declare, God did not give me a spirit of fear. No doubt the situation that I am standing and facing is, yes, but I know God is, a, he can change that. He can transform that. Because God says, I am with you, I will uphold you. So, this is the time to believe in his word. Ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you. We try to do things and we try to tell God to do something. God says, you need to believe and trust in me. When you trust in God, God says, those who put their trust in the Lord will not be put to shame. That's why we keep reminding ourselves every day, he is the same yesterday, today and forever. He is still working in you and me. He is strengthening you. When you say, I'm weak, he's strengthening you. Lord, I need help. He's helping you. If, if, you, if you think that you can do all things on your own, then that's the time we fail. Every day, every minute of our life, we are depending on you. We are depending on the Holy Spirit. And if he's available 24-7 with us all the time. So as a Christian, as a believer, we should be rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances. For that is the will of God as vocation as Christians. It's a joy. It shouldn't be a burden. Coming for this prayer also, I was sharing with Brother Newton, every morning to come, it's like a joy. We are, I, have, I have attended retreats, 10-day retreats. So we'll be waiting when the 10 days will be over to go back to stay with your family. Now it's like three years, four years, going on the fourth year. It's a joy. In the night when we go to sleep, waiting when to get up in the morning, to meet our Savior, to worship Him, to praise Him, to thank Him, and to magnify His name. And now, once we get our battery charged, the whole day we are rejoicing. Every moment you get an opportunity, you start to pray in tongues. What are you doing? Getting connected to God. You are allowing Him to work in you. Now we know God is at work. He wants to change. He wants to change you inwardly from inside. Out, unless the inside is changed, outward you can change. But we are trying to change outward, not changing inside. Inside, you and me can't change. God only can change when you submit to Him. You see, you take Psalm 37 4. You can read that Psalm 37 4. Psalm 37 4, yeah. Make the Lord your delight, and he will grant your heart's desire. Amen. Yeah. So now you see, it says, delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's desire. Here it says, when I start delighting, now, for example, now I want to buy a house in Madurai. So I'm delighting. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I'm delighting in his word. 
now my desire well you have a house of my own it's not wrong because god wants you to have a house of your own so that you can worship him you can praise him no one to disturb you you can do all what you want in the house that is if you if you rent it out to people uh, uh, the owner will come say don't shout loud don't praise god you can't put pictures of jesus on the wall so all these restrictions will come so it's not wrong it's the thing because god wants you to but uh, just building a house staying on the south is not important you you should remember that your names are written in heaven see we all have a place in heaven but on this earth we should it says no thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is we should have that experience here we should create an atmosphere of heaven on this planet earth my house your house should be a heavenly experience here itself so it's not wrong so when you ask god and sometimes you know i see people in the ask also say lord give me a small house lord in a small house they trying to be very humble like you know give me a small house lord so the only for me and my wife in tamil only they say enakku or sinna veedu kodunga small house they try to be very humble and think why if god gives you a big house uh, heaven is going to get bankrupt bankrupt no if god gives you a big house when people come for ministry fathers nuns and sisters come they can stay there when god if god gives you he will supply all your needs he will supply i still remember a girl as a sister who was a prayer group in coimbatore she she was only going and giving tuition to houses going and teaching children i agreed and getting tuition with that money she built a house of her own she didn't take a loan she bought a car of her own just believing god my god will supply all my needs all our needs so we are not going to borrow or like you know uh, go beyond your budget or something you he knows what you need so you are said delight in the lord and you will defy, and you will uh, delight in the lord and you will supply all your needs this is supper what all the words go sister delight in the lord make make the lord your delight Right. And, and he and he will grant your heart's your desire heart's desire ah here comes your heart's desire no my heart's desire is to be in a house in madurai no i keep doing it it's not wrong to ask god and ask him but he's not answering my prayer no he has a plan for me in a different way no is uh, i go to mumbai or I go to australia or some other place and for a holiday and there i find i like that place and thing and now i start to fall in love with that place and now god gives me a place there now and there i buy a house in australia or africa or whichever country no because god has already planned even before i was found in my mother's womb where i'll be what i'll be doing so he has to fulfill that need so he took away the desire of madurai and put mumbai or bangalore or something but i was thinking why god i am praising and thanking god why is he not giving me this house he knows what is best for me he knows that i will be doing ministry there or some for some plan and purpose the same work for everything when you delight in his word he will grant you your heart's desire means now if if it is if, unless if it's god's desire that he wants me to build a house in madurai he will fulfill it and if god has already planned for me to be in bangalore so he will not supply that need he, when i go to bangalore and i pray he gives me that desire now i get a house now i get before he without a loan without everything will come in line because it's god's plan and then if i go with the if i even if i don't get god's guidance i buy the house in madurai and then after i get a transfer to some place and then i this this house uh, i have to sell in a hurry i have to sell i will be losing a lot of money because if i sell uh, if we try to sell the house quickly you know somebody will ask for less money or something like that but if you go god it's god's plan everything will be fulfilled so that is why this scripture psalm 374 such a powerful scripture where you can use it for asking for god's guidance we has james 1:5 give us wisdom and then you start delighting because he will supply your needs now i might want so many things but he will give me what i need i want five cars but if i need one car is enough but if i'm doing ministry i need five cars when uh, so many people come for ministry i can give it to them share with them for the poor and the, not to boast that god is supplying all my needs he is a god he is you see we need to know a god he is our father we don't need to tell him also but when we seek him first when we give him first priority all these things will be added on to you now god takes pleasure in seeing us prosperous 
No, that doesn't mean that uh, uh, we we are t we're speaking about only uh, prosperity. No, nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants to be poor. God says, I will make you the head and not the tail. You will lend and not borrow. He is putting me in a situation that way, that I am I'm in an overflow. I don't need a miracle because I have already good health. Unless if you have a sick and you need, then you need to pray for God to give you a miracle to get healing. But even that he is ready to give you. When you are in, in God's plan, your needs are being supplied. You are getting, you are connected to God every day, every minute of your life. Now, even when you face with trials and problems, now you know God is a good God. He's your father. He will not test you beyond your strength. So you will not murmur and grumble. You will continue because you know the devil tries to do something, but God will change it for my good. So I'm not losing my confidence in God and his word. I'm able to fulfill this plan. No, that's why I keep telling my brothers and sisters, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, you know, God gives us this joy, and this joy comes from his word, and from his promises that he is with me now, and he is the one who can give you the joy, the one who creates this whole universe. He is inside of you now, and who can separate you from this joy? Any situation, I'm not going to get worried, because the one who is in me is greater than the one who is I need to believe it. The more I start confessing it, who I'm confessing, I'm telling the devil, <laughs> careful. Because the devil, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. See, he's waiting <laughs> when you would speak the wrong word. For example, you say, I'm gone fed up, I want to kill myself. Immediately, after some time, he'll show you what to do. The devil will show you. The next thing he'll show you, nobody loves you. Who cares for you? Your family is coming against you. Yes, go and jump from this, do this. When you know that thought is not from the Lord, immediately you have to submit and surrender and ask for pardon. And ask the Lord, I will live and not die and proclaim the good news. I am living on this planet Earth only for one purpose, that is to magnify his name, to glorify his name. And this should be done every day. So we may not be able to go and preach all over, but we can pray, intercede. As Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for us now, we can intercede for people because today, what I am today, somebody prayed for me 30 years back. Today, I am doing ministry. I did not know Old Testament, New Testament. I didn't go to Bible college. You know, but I have seen the Word of God alive and active. I have seen the Word of God working. I have seen the Word of God. It says it never fails. No, we need to be faithful to his word, faithful to his promise, hold on to this promise. Then life becomes so easy. Now we re realize and recognize, why are we not enjoying this life? This beautiful life God has given us to us to enjoy every day, every minute of our life. Because the Bible says, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him. When you acknowledge God in all your ways, there's no room for sin. There's no room for jealousy. There's no room for pride. Because God is involved. Now you're able to look at that brother or sister with the eyes of Jesus. You're not looking with jealousy or pride. Now you can see what while you're doing this, God is working in you. He's working. Now you, you know, before you were getting angry, now he's taken away that anger. Because you say, Lord, you submit, Lord, this area I feel, I'm, I'm feeling in this area. He's purifying you. He's sanctifying you. He, because he's at work all the time. We should be ready for change. Ready because, Lord, we know you're doing it for our good, Lord. And all things happen for good for those who love God. We love you. We love your word. We love your promises. We see the word of God alive mm -hmm. and active. That word as we listen to your word, it's going inside and cutting away the thing because we don't know what's happening inside. That word of God is a double sword, goes and cuts away all those things which is not of the kingdom of God. And now life becomes so easy. Enjoy every day. The, the Bible says, no, in Romans 14, 11, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. That is God's plan. Verse 12 says, each and every one of us have to give an account of this. What is my part in this? You may not be able to go and preach. You can sit in your house and pray that the millions of people who are spiritually blind, who have not known the Lord, 
Whereas we are fighting with our brothers, these Protestants, these this, that, that denomination, this denomination. They already know. They are going to answer. People who are dying today without knowing the name of Jesus. Might be your neighbor, might be your maid, might be your brother or sister. Who, although he's a Christian, but he has not tasted the love of God. You have tasted God's love. You need to pray, my dear brother, my dear sister. That's why our focus should be on God and his word and his promises. What I need to do for you, Lord, today. As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. What is my part today? Because he gave me good health. That's why we say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. What? To go and preach the good news. The, we keep saying, Lord, you are the strength of my feet. He's given us good health to go and preach, not just to sit and we can enjoy Enjoy life, enjoy it, but give him glory. Acknowledge him in all your ways. In everything, acknowledge him. If you are breathing freely today, acknowledge him. Don't criticize that person in this way. Don't commit, you can't start to judge and condemn. We have no judge because we know the truth now. God knows even your secret thoughts. We are asking God, purify my thoughts, Lord. Let me be able, I, when we say I have the mind, I need to think like God. I need to speak like God. I need to purify my thoughts so that I could live the life that God wants me. After preaching all this, I should not be meeting up with God and say, I do not know you because I didn't do the will of the Father. Every day, every minute of our life might, might be the last day. We are talking about wars and all. Today, if we die, let the war, war might come, may not come. Tonight, if I die, the very next minute, if I die, where I'm going? What I'm, uh, can I face my Savior? We're singing that song. When my Lord comes to take me back home, am I prepared? Am I ready? Only God knows my thoughts. And we know God is a God of love and he wants you and me to be transformed in his image and likeness. We read Proverbs 4.18 The path of the righteous will become brighter and brighter like the dawn of day. So I need to just believe in this. Allow the Holy Spirit to change me inwardly. The change is so beautiful. And that's why when the change takes place, outward you look at a person who's praying, you can see the brightness in the face. The beauty, God's beauty is seen in your face and my face. That's what we need to do every day, every minute of our life. Believe in His word. Believe in His promises. Now you will see to enjoy this beautiful life. Now we know nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can separate. We read it. We are finding it difficult to believe, but you must start declaring, I believe. You keep saying, I believe, I believe, I believe, you believe. When you say, I don't believe, you won't believe, you won't believe. That's why we correct people. Don't say, I don't believe. We all believe. We believe God's word. We won't believe other things. I won't believe anything that comes on the news. Because it, we, cannot, we can't put our trust in the news. They just highlight so many things just to, uh, to do, to make that thing look like real. But God says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. I treasure the words of God. I treasure His promises. When we read it, I believe it. Because I have tasted His love. I have seen it working. I have seen it working all the time. God is at work all the time. That's why you know you can't deceive. You can't you can't uh, uh, speak something and do something because God knows. He knows even before a word is formed in your mouth. He knows. Now he wants his name to be glorified. So whatever we do, his name is to be glorified. That is the main purpose. We are, mm -hmm. the Bible says again in John fifteen sixteen. Can you read this? In John fifteen sixteen. Yes, brother. You did not choose me. It was I who chose you and sent you to go and bear much fruit, fruit that will last. And everything you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Amen. Next one, my commandment to you is this. Love one another. Amen. Amen. So, this is very clearly, you know, 
you did not choose me but i chose you and we come to know even before the foundation of the earth god has already chosen he has you in mind the plan was done before the foundation of the earth and what that we should be holy and blameless that is his purpose he is working on us not to go to heaven on the earth we should live a blameless life our goal is not to go to heaven our goal is mainly to purify ourselves and if we, are, we will not be eligible to go to heaven if we are not able to purify ourselves so it says you did not choose me but i chose you and i appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the father in my name he may give you and we know if we are not connected to the vine we will not be able to bear fruit and he says unless you bear much fruit you will be known as my disciples and now we know the bible says you will be known as my disciples only through my love so you shall love 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 and that is what we we think that love is that made us love is that, that saved us it was love everything is god's love because of his love and whatever we do we should be motivated with love i am coming for this prayer because of because i love god not because i want some healing i want him that comes that's part of the package but my main aim is i love him i love his word that is the my most important thing because i can deceive you all but i can't deceive god do you really love his word do you, if you love it you will treasure it you will keep his word in your heart and when you keep his word in your heart now you will see great changes taking place because the word is at work we see god is at work if you have the word of god in your heart he is working in you he is changing your want he is changing he is putting his desire in you now so he is he is giving you the desire to worship him in spirit and truth he is giving you the desire to go and receive the body and blood every day he is putting that desire when he puts a desire you fulfill it also many people are praying that you get a house where close to the church yes god only put that desire and then you will get a house and then you will be able to fulfill the plan we know the desire that comes from god and the desire that comes from the enemy so we we can see very clearly it is from god so we know he is working and he knows your heart when you are connected to god and his word that desire is is being fulfilled in your life and god's desire we all know that we should all be holy and blameless that is his desire because then the devil cannot come cannot come and accuse you because he is always accusing and now he is accusing you through through your own brother through your own sister through your own family member what you are praying what you are coming and shouting now today we are all weak we we should not justify and go and shout it we need to take it as a precaution and ask the lord lord show me the areas where i need to change show me the areas where i am not operating in love but because whatever i do should be operated to love and then like the breath that i breathe everything i should acknowledge you i should feel your presence and now the bible says the lord is spirit and wherever the spirit is there is freedom so as you are breathing and breathing out as you are worshiping the lord the spirit of the lord is moving he is not only changing you he is moving into your own house sanctifying your house setting the setting them apart bringing them convicting them and if anything that is not of the kingdom that has to leave because that is the spirit of god the spirit of the lord is moving he is all you need to do is believe and use your imagination from here you can allow the spirit to move to australia america where your children your grandchildren are there and the spirit of the lord will move and their lives will be transformed it's so beautiful to believe god's word and start acting on it you will see the glory of god so we see very clearly god wants us to grow spiritually and today we look at four keys to spiritual growth one is focus on your relationship with god focus on your relationship with god now it should be a relationship between father and son father and daughter 
<laughs> you are my father. I can come to you boldly. I can come to you with my weakness. Only you know my life. You made me. You know where I'm strong, where I'm weak. I need help in this area. He will strengthen me. That is the relationship God wants. <laughs> because he's at work. And when you believe and you go to him, he's able to do that for you. Then the second one, it says, pray for growth, Lord. Because more than you, God wants you to grow spiritually. He wants you to be strong. Because he prayed. He prayed for St. Peter. He didn't pray that Peter will not be tempted. He prayed that his faith will not fail. Now, that same word God is praying for you and me also. Yes, that's why you and me today are strong. We are in faith. As we could have given up long ago. Many of us, I, I still remember when my wife was first sick 20, 30 years back. I was thinking, if I die, no, no problem. I was walking on the road. I was trying to say, if a lorry or something bumps me, I'm ready to die because I couldn't face that situation. I was not strong enough. I did not know God. I did not know his plan. Today, no. Today, God has strengthened me. means he has allowed me and brought me out of that. Now I can, I can boast in my weakness. Whenever I am weak, he strengthens me. So now we know God is the same. Yesterday, if we if He brought me out of that situation that day, today He will not leave me. Now my attitude, my thing to God is it I should look, examine myself. How is my spiritual life right now? I should be able to do more for God, more, more for this kingdom of God, because that's the thing. When you come out, He says, "No, told Peter, when you come out of it, encourage your brother or sister." That's why we can know. We can encourage. Only when you see people, when you see hospitals, you know, people are struggling. Now. Whenever I pass a hospital, I'll be praying because I was in a situation that way. No money, nothing to do. No one to pray for me, no one to do. That time, God has put angels. Somebody was praying for me. That's why I came out of that. Today, I come to know. That's why I keep praying for all those people who do not have somebody to pray for them. Do not have money to go to, because you go to the hospital first thing they deposit one lakh two lakhs now we pray in such a way now god has given you good health you don't need to go to the doctors you don't need a miracle because god is supplying all your needs you don't be in a situation that you feel depressed because god's love is being poured into your heart every minute of your life then it says we need to memorize and meditate on God's words. That automatic God does it. Because when you see, you read a scripture, you memorize it, and God said, he, he, he is the one who reminds you. As we just, the Holy Spirit reminded me of Zaphania 3.17, the Lord your God is in your midst. Imagine. He is, that is the truth. But I find it so difficult to believe. God, the Lord your God is in your midst. A mighty warrior who gives you victory. He's, that's why we keep reminding us, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will not change. He's here in your midst. Wherever you want to, as I'm preaching the word of God, you in Australia, in America, all, you, all those who are listening to this word, God is with you now. He's the same. You know, it all depends on you. Are you believing? You believe you receive. You don't believe it. You are the one who's not able to enjoy. So he says, meditate and memorize God's words. Then the last one, seek wisdom, asking the Lord. Wisdom is like, you know, asking. You see a person, a beggar who comes to you, you give him a full plate of rice in the night. Next morning, he's standing at your doorstep again. He says, I gave yesterday. It was for yesterday. The same way we come to God. Lord, we need wisdom. We need wisdom to live this life, to live it according to your will. And we know Solomon asked for wisdom. And you are a God. You said, you ask anything in my name, I will do. And we thank you, Lord, as we come into your mighty presence once again. Father, you said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do. You want us to grow spiritually, Lord. And we know today, you are doing the work. You are working in us, Lord. You have not stopped. We know. You never sleep or slumber. Help us to submit and surrender, Lord. Help us to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, Lord. Because you want us to live a life 
blameless so that people seeing us will magnify and glorify your name. Lord, you said, unless you bear much fruit, you will be known as my disciples. Yes, Father, help us, Lord, as we continue our journey on this planet Earth, knowing very well that you are with us in us, trimming us, purifying us, setting us apart so that you, your name would be glorified in whatever we do, Lord. As you said in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, he said, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, who has already blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we may, we should be holy and blameless before him, Lord. That is what we want to be, Lord. When we meet you face to face, we should be blameless, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, as we cooperate with you, Holy Spirit, that you are the one who is leading us. You are the one who is molding us so that we would be blameless before you, Lord. Help us, Lord. And we believe all this could be done only through the Holy Spirit. John 3.30 says, we should decrease and you should increase in our life, Lord. We thank you once again, Father. Your word will not return to you void, Lord. It will fulfill the plan and purpose of what it has been sent. We surrender and submit to you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to magnify and glorify your name. Help us to be remind ourselves the plan that you have for us, the purpose that we are on this planet Earth is to become like your son, Jesus, Lord. And we are, believe that you are at work, Lord. Help us to cooperate with you. Help us to be obedient to your word, Lord, so that whatever we do, we should magnify and glorify your name, Lord. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.